Hey, what's up and how's it going? My name is Toby and as some of you guys already know, I've only recently released a big update for my AR asset, the AR Magic Bar, which is a tool for Unity that allows you to very easily get your 3D assets into your AR scene and then interact with them at runtime. And this update also brought custom interactions as well as the inventory system. And now I'm happy to announce that there's actually a free version of the AR Magic Bar called the AR Magic Bar Lite, which is available right now in the Unity Asset Store and it contains all the basic features of the AR Magic Bar, such as bringing your 3D prefabs into your AR scene and then being able to transform them at runtime on your device to create any kind of game, such as an RTS or a spellcaster game or just some kind of builder game or prototype. So this is all possible with the AR Magic Bar Lite. And now I want to show you guys how to set up the AR Magic Bar Lite so you can get started with it right away. And if you enjoy using it, if you test it out and you like it, consider upgrading to the AR Magic Bar, which has a lot more advanced features such as the new inventory system or the custom interactions. And this really supports the channel and helps me to dedicate more time to develop the AR Magic Bar Lite as well as the AR Magic Bar Standard version in the future. And of course, leaving a review in the Unity Asset Store would also help the channel and me tremendously. And that's a rhyme. Okay, so we're here in a brand new Unity project using the built-in render pipeline and I have installed the uh, AR Foundation package, but of course Lightship works just as well. And um, then I've gone ahead and created a new scene with an AR session, XR origin, an event system and a directional light. And also make sure then to set your build settings to iOS or Android and in the player settings make sure to select the extra simulation AR core and AR kit respectively and of course also make sure to fix these issues in the project validation. So then uh, next up let's drag in the AR magic bar. And we can already see here on the right side that we can choose our placement method. And so we are going to use plane detection, so not meshing. And then let's also set up plane detection in our AR scene. And for that, we can simply do a right click and create a new uh, default plane like this. Let's create a prefab and delete the default plane. And then under the XR origin, let's actually do it here. Uh, and add an AR plane manager like this. And then let's drag in the AR default plane. Cool. So let's also set up our XR uh, environments and just import or install the sample environments. Select import. Okay, so now we have this backyard environment here, but we can also choose something else and of course toggle the light on if this was off and then just close this window. So then in the game view, if we hit play, we can see that we're here in the XR environment and let's also turn the light a bit down. Um, so if we turn the light down, we can already see two uh, buttons here at the bottom and what they do I'll explain a bit later, but this will already show us that the magic bar is working and also we can see that the plane detection is working as well and we need to remember to set our light to 0.22 because we did that in play mode. Okay, so to make the actual plane detection and placement working, let's also make sure to add a AR Raycast Manager. So let's add that also to the XR origin. We don't actually need to put a Raycast prefab in here. The uh, AR Magic Bar is going to do that by itself. And now we can begin to set up the AR Magic Bar. And this is very simple. So we can just go to Window, AR Magic Bar, Prefab and Image Editor. Let's drag this one to our uh, window here. And let's then import some assets that we can actually use. All right, so the AR Magic Bar works with any kinds of assets, including particle systems, animated assets that use a skinned mesh renderer, as well as just standard 3D objects that use a normal mesh renderer. So let's try out how this works by 
starting with this sci-fi warrior that I imported here. And um, I'll simply go ahead and let's try if this model works. So I'll just take a look at it. And yeah, so the model seems to be pretty good. One good thing is that it already has a collider. If the model does not have a collider, there will be a automatically, uh, there will be a script that will automatically add a collider depending on the kind of model, either a mesh collider or a box collider. However, I'd always advise you to rather add your own collider to the object um, to make sure that it also just fits the size of it. And then also make sure that, of course, the object has a renderer attached, but if it doesn't, you know, you won't see anything at all. So that's also uh, important for particle assets. They also, of course, always have a renderer within the particle system already, just to let you guys know. And um, then let's begin by just adding a pair. So let's drag in the robot in the prefab section, and then we can just uh, create some kind of icon and this should be a um, icon in the one by one format and here for example you can just create a screenshot that is ideally a one by one and for example drag this one into our scene and just click on it and make sure that uh, this one texture type is a sprite 2d and ui and then we can just hit apply and can use this in our prefab and image editor as a icon for example and then we can just hit create placeable objects like this and now when there's no error message let's see uh, this is already uh, i think we already handled this so this is an old error message then everything should be fine and if we go back into our project folder in, in the ar magic bar we should see under placeable objects database in the inspector that indeed the object has been added and if we click on it it will navigate to the resources folder placeable objects and then we can see that indeed the object has been created and now if we double click this one we can see that the object got prepared with all the gizmos but we can also see that the object is quite big so let's just adjust this object by um, opening up the prefab here on the left side and clicking on the character. So this is pretty much the visual and these are the gizmos and this is the parent object. Um, and so we could potentially downscale uh, or downsize the whole placeable object, but this would also downscale all of the UI elements. So if you wanna do that, you can do that too. But we wanna just take the visual and uh, do the symmetrical scaling and then just reduce the scale like this and so these uh, objects here on the top, these UI objects, they will automatically move above the character or a bit to the side, depending on how the um, mesh renderer is being set up. So these will automatically um, be placed a bit above the um, mesh, the highest point of the mesh renderer of the object. So that's how they set up. One more thing we need to check, and this is something uh, that has to do with AR Foundation, is that the XR origin is actually at position 000. Otherwise, we'll get some weird offset errors in the simulator. So let's check that and let's hit play again. Okay, so let's test out. Let's click on the robot and place it. And yeah, here it is. So then let's try to click on it. And yeah, we also have uh, the UI here. And by the way, um, if you go too close to the robot, then the UI will somewhere float above you because it will always have a little bit of distance, making sure that, well, it doesn't uh, collide with the robot itself and so that you can actually click it. And now here we can just select, for example, the rotation and rotate the robot, could uh, move it or scale it up like this. Could also reset the rotation and also delete it. Cool. So this is the basics of the AR placement bar. And um, these two buttons here, we can either hide the objects or paginate. So we can um, define how many objects should be on one page and then toggle between the pages. But we can also get rid of these uh, objects, of course, if we don't want pagination or if we don't want to, the player to be able to hide the placement bar, we can also change this. 
So let's um, do something here. So let's go into the AR magic bar and um, then let's go to the placement bar logic. And here we can say enable height, enable page. And for example, let's say we don't want uh, the um, we don't want the player to hide the um, placement bar, then uh, let's deselect this one. We could also potentially change out the texture here. So if we want some other texture, if we want some customizability, we can do that um, and um, just select any kind of item we like. And we can also change the maximum items per page. So let's change this one to five, for example. But of course, you always need to be careful uh, if we go into portrait mode, if there's really small phones, then, well, I found that three items would be kind of max that you want to have and then rather paginate. And so all I'm doing now is I'm looking for some cool assets, then I can just drop in. And um, so, for example, I got a particle system, I got this. Roman guy here from some Cinti Studios pack. Then I'm also taking this nice robot here, like that. And um, let's see, I think I have another cool pack here. Oh, yeah, I have a low poly all. Um, so this one seems to have some URP uh, materials. So let's quickly fix this one by. Um, going to the mesh and just change this to the standard material like that. Cool. So then back in the prefab and image editor, uh, let's try something else. So there's some kind of tree probably here in the environment. Let's take this one. So I think this was like the tree one like this. And um, let's take this one too. Awesome. And let's drag it in. So this was the vine. Let's make this to a sprite 2D like this. And let's add it here. So let's drag it in here and let's just hit create placeable objects. All right, so this seems to be good. And to check if everything worked, let's just click on the placeable object database, go to the inspector, click it, and we can see that all these elements have been placed. If you have issues with um, some kind of error messages here, this might be maybe because you've used um, characters twice. Um, and uh, generally, I would advise always to just use each object and each um, of those icons once and not uh, double them so that we don't get any errors or maybe you just uh, added a prefab but no image or image but no prefab so these will cause uh, errors and what you can do if nothing works anymore just go ahead and delete all of those and in the placeable object database also go ahead and remove all of those which of those objects which say missing or none or where there's not a um, some kind of um, scriptable object um, shown here and then you should be able to refresh your database and add pairs again and so then everything should be working okay so let's first of all check our assets so let's double click and we can see okay this person is way too big and so for that, let's just reduce the scale like this. So then we have the all, this is also too big. So let's re reduce, reduce the scale like that. Let's also make sure sometimes these assets have like a camera or something attached, but I think this one hasn't. Uh, the flamethrower, uh, let's click on the particle system. Yes, yeah, also a bit too big, but still okay, I guess. A little bit smaller. Um, then let's go through the robot and as we created this one once again, let's reduce the size here too. And then there's um, this guy, I think we already had it, yeah. The tree, the tree is way too big, although trees are of course big. 
Let's make it a bit smaller, like this. And then the vine. Oh, I think this is this is good. Perfect. So then let's see what happens uh, if we click on play. And yeah, we can see there are three objects here and there's also no hide button as we um, toggle this one off. And we can actually paginate here and see all those assets. So let's begin by uh, placing some trees like this. I don't remember if we actually put colliders on here, but still, um, if we click on here, we can see that it's working, but this seems to have not a collider. So this is why um, maybe you can't click up here. So you can only select it like this. And this will most likely be because some kind of auto collider got added. And this one, this one is better. This one seems to have some kind of mesh collider. So um, probably already had a collider. So we can see that although maybe some objects did not have a collider and we forgot to add it, well, it's still working because it's adding a automatic collider. So let's take a look at the all uh, like this. So this one is flying and we can see that it's also working. So we can select it and we can just move, rotate up or down like this. So that's pretty cool. Also just reset the rotation. So then we have a particle system. So if we click here, it will also just be placed and well, those particle systems do not have a collider usually, but still, if we click here, we can see that something is happening. And this is because at the center of the object, an auto collider has been added and we could just move it around, rotate it and handle it like a normal um, object like this. And then we also have this character here. Um, so let's click here and we can do the same thing. So just scale, rotate, move as we wish. Cool. So. This is the way how we can just add multiple objects to the AR magic bar and you could probably see and feel how easy it is to do that. All right, so that's it for the setup tutorial for the AR magic bar light. Please also look at the documentation which shows you some more and advanced features. And if you have any kind of questions, then feel free to write a comment below and I'll try to answer all of them as quickly as possible. But until then, as always, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.